today on Ramblings with Rebecca, it's time for yet another episode of This Week in Law School. Uh, several ridiculous things have happened of late. Uh, law school is a, a great, great place for entertaining quotes and heaven only knows what else. Uh, so one particularly good sentence um, said a few weeks ago, I think in international climate change law, it's as easy to find a scientist who will say white is black as it is a lawyer who will say red is blue. I'm able to get this verbatim because I've transcribed most of my classes when taking notes because I'm, you know, type A and OCD. Um, anyway, <laughs> but so the point of this uh, is that, of course, states and other parties can quite easily find a qualified scientist to attest to the scientific truth or untruth, validity or non-validity of pretty much anything that they want. Similarly, people in states and other entities can find lawyers to make an argument, often a fairly good argument, for virtually anything being legal or illegal. Um, hopefully, of course, the point is that those which aren't good arguments or are not correct or good interpretations of the law can be easily refuted. Uh, but the fact remains that it's pretty easy to find qualified experts um, to attest and, you know, to pretty much anything uh, that people would want them to say. Uh, this comes to bear in international environmental and climate change law quite a lot uh, around self-reporting mechanisms, which is how many of the protocols uh, run. More and more, there's an emphasis on the importance of having inter or, excuse me, in independent reporters, um, so external uh, people coming in to validate you know, what the self-reported, you know, states are saying about their climate change emissions, um, their protection schemes for marine mammals, uh, their transboundary harm reports, these kind of things. Uh, you know, independent, you know, professional experts are generally good things. Um, having someone not represent the state on a panel, but instead, you know, their actual discipline. Of course, these are all going to be subject to their own biases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you know, there are questions around you know, a state cedes authority to this panel uh, or to this group of people, so it makes sense for a state to want to have some form of representation on said panel. Uh, so all kinds of fun issues. Um, but I just particularly enjoyed that quote. It struck me as funny, and I think I probably laughed a bit loud in class, alas. Uh, other particularly good moment, uh, we had a CITES day, which I would say CITES, but apparently they say CITES, whatever, C-I-T-E-S, um, the Convention on Trade in Endangered Species, except I'm missing the I. International Trade in Endangered Species, probably? Uh-oh, I'm a bad law student. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the main international framework for governing trade in endangered species, tigers, for example. Uh, I say tigers, for example, because our instructor this day was really, really, really keen on tigers. Um, to the extent that our PowerPoint was like bright tiger orange with black text. And he also brought his stuffed animal tiger, which he had because he's adopted a tiger um, through uh, the World Wildlife Fund, which I highly do suggest. It is a good thing to do. Donate money to help protect a polar bear or a tiger or whatever you'd like. Um, through WDF, good stuff. Anyway, uh, our professor brought in the tiger and proceeded to throw, lob the stuffed tiger around the room as like, you know, the speaking baton kind of thing uh, to make students answer questions. So that was an exciting day. Um, I do in fact know some things about trade in tigers now, but mostly I remember a stuffed tiger flying around the classroom in the middle of law school. Um, so that's good. Uh, but on that subject, don't buy or trade endangered species. It's naughty and not nice. Uh, and there are a lot of glorious regulations um, citing when you can and cannot trade, um, you know, because obviously we want things like zoos to be able to have protective schemes so that people can enjoy these beautiful animals. Uh, but obviously we also want those animals well protected and for them to be in you know, public zoos well cared for instead of just you know, sold to private collectors and things like that. Um, all kinds of questions that we rose around, you know, how to actually get numbers up um, while, you know, keeping the regulations and, you know, why are we protecting them and that kind of thing. Anyway, so there you go. A few funny moments from the past few weeks.